The Masterclass on Navigating Cybersecurity Challenges in the Era of Digital Transformation by Dr. Gulshan Rai has been interesting and informative. Now we have a question and answer round. Our first question is Generally, technology comes first and the legal frameworks and the compliance frameworks come later. By that time people have already lost a lot of money and suffered a lot of data privacy issues due to technology advancement. How do you see this? This is a fact. That's why say we need to look at law will come, framework will come, law will take, law may come up, but implementation still take time. Information Technology Act was come in 2000, then in 2008 amendment, and still many of the things are not established there, not implemented there. Law, this is the scenario, it will come up there. We can't, we, I mean, nobody can, nobody can change, nobody can stop it. That is why I said, when we implement architecture, when we implement mechanism, we need to create our policy and we need to create our aim. Today, we are quite awareness is there. We have all well educated. We need to enhance the resiliency of the system. That's what I said it. Resiliency of the system, we look at it there. You see, if you move on a highway, you protect yourself, you control yourself, you build a house. You create those design and architecture. You need to create the security and risk there right at the building stage architecture. Law will come certainly. It's not necessary the law, even if the law is there, law will give you the full respite, the full, full kind of relief. No, it is not also not like that. Whether technology or non-technology, law is the last resource. But we need to take care. That's why the word due diligence is there. As the number of IoT devices and connected Wi-Fi or Bluetooth devices continue to rise, what are some effective security strategies to safeguard these interconnected devices? See, IoT devices are different than your other other devices there, in the sense that they use the light encryption. They use the memory is very less, very low there, very small devices, sensor, very small devices are there. They go on the same DNS system though so they're supposed to be a different DNS system there. And that's why the DOD and the IT ministry have propagated IPVC kind of a culture so that you can identify IoT. We need to apply the same system as we do for the normal system. You can, you can bifurcate, segregate or segment your, in terms of the VLAN, all those IoT devices there so that you can contain the malicious activity or non-performance of the system there. That's one. Before you segment the network, you redesign the architecture and they put them behind a number of firewalls, number of such perimeter security. That's where you need to do secure those devices there. The IoT now comes with the secure configuration also. They are read-only kind of a mode. And those things need to be implemented when you talk about IoT. And as I said, and the, uh, and the question, person has asked, person has asked question, billions of IoT devices are. The government institutions having to use outdated and absolute computers that need to be upgraded for effective enforcement of security. What is your take on that? You remember my last sentence on the presentation was management. Management has to provide funds. I don't know Mr. Janki Riman's background, where is he from, where he comes up there. But it's a management has to provide the funds to update it. That's why management conscious and management awareness is needed. There. The top CEO or top person of the organization need to see that. Not only you have an obsolete computer, the obsolete operating softwares are also there. They are not being maintained, properly maintained. And I say, said, when I said unmanaged infrastructure, these are the devices that we're talking about unmanaged infrastructure. I said 50% of the devices in our organization are unmanaged and they are security risks. I said that. The best is provide fund, change them. No, I will not like to get on those kind of a concept here. Okay. The system public. See, actually, I mean, it's good to have a public uh, a kind of a DPI there. It's good to have digital public infrastructure. Good to have it. But there are ramifications also. As I said, technology has a good, bad and bad aspects also. We have no alternative other than to use technology. DPI is a step towards that. But then we need to care. We need to address the issues or resulting of DPI. There is a trend going on in the world. Again, we are coming back on a proprietary kind of a, a, a interface in a proprietary kind of a thing. And the security in the kind of a DPI 
is great challenge who will maintain those who will create maintenance of the software who will certify the interfaces there that that's there are concepts there <clears throat> not that we cannot create a model so i mean everything need to be thought through but creating implementing a system but what is happening is that we are in a hurry to introduce a system we bulldoze the system and inter- it implement it but we need to look at comprehensively before it goes is good 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 steps good initiative but then it has poses a lot of challenges also i said we are operating in a convergence of technologies no application no hardware no device will function without ai they are together the entire operation is controlled by the ai i said robotic process automation is a part and parcel of any application today so there is they can't be separated out ai is going to be embedded part of each and every system hardware or software we implement or network system implement. the discussion of public key infrastructure framework if there was any discussion in the g20 meeting in the context of digital public infrastructure i think government should create those promotion kind of a thing i only can say that i'm not in the government how perilous is a combination of quantum computer and artificial intelligence STQC does it. The CERT has impaneled a uh, whole lot of, a, 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 I mean, companies who can uh, uh, give the certification for testing website, penetration testing, vulnerability testing. CERT has given there are more fifty more odd companies have been impaneled by them. They go through a very elaborate process there uh, for testing. It takes almost a couple of months for them to uh, go through the process and impanel those companies, and they keep on revising them. The system is functioning for last couple of years. very in a very solid manner and is very effective system also you can go to the website of cert and do that will government authorities take necessary steps like in advanced countries to promote open source tools for digital forensic analysis i mean the job opportunities are very good i don't think the 90% of the organization uh, have this adequate properly trained cyber security staff there no the cyber security policy 2013 projected 1 million uh, uh, skilled security professional we can do thereafter lot many courses started the certificate courses formal courses informal courses were all started there the demand is going up and up today you do you advertise you don't get a security professional you started getting a lot of certificate uh, uh, certificate there a lot of certificate uh, you can get it i think i mean there are uh, five or six courses are there which can which are certified and which can anyone can take from the country also and you go to the cert website then give you list of the certificate courses from where you can get those uh, training or where which you can get uh, the certification done they're all listed in the in a cert website they can make use of the cert website hope you enjoyed this master class and thank you for watching Don't forget to tune into our next one.